If you've ever come across my YouTube, then you've surely heard of the gamma function, which is the generalized factorial function. We are used to the definition of the factorial of a whole number as just the product of all of the integers up to that number. This definition limits us to taking only factorials of, well, integers. And the gamma function enables us to get results, well, bizarre results, like one half factorial, or because it actually extends the definition of the factorial to all of the real numbers, differentiate the factorial function. But the sad reality of this function is that if you've heard of it, it's probably been just handed to you. I mean, I myself am guilty of coming out of it pretty much out of the blue on my channel when solving certain problems, you know. People tend to explain the fact that gamma produces factorials using their recursive properties, which is that, well, x factorial is equal to x times x minus 1 factorial. And gamma satisfies this property, you can prove it using some integration by parts just like this, and the limit there, well, it goes to 0, because, well, that exponential just goes to 0 much faster than that polynomial term grows to infinity. And now if you combine this fact with the fact that the gamma of 0 is going to be equal to 1, well, you can actually prove inductively that gamma will produce every single factorial at least for positive integers. You know what, I've seen this argument quite a few times, but it just doesn't satisfy me. I mean, I love to see where things spring from, I'm getting poetic here, but this thing, it just doesn't give me what I want. So. Let's derive the gamma function. The problem that I would like to take on today is as follows. I would like to know whether there is a function that could extend the definition of the factorial to all of the real numbers, keeping its properties. So I would like to go through the algebraic process of discovering this function here with you guys. But first of all, I would like to lay down some intuition here. So what are some places in math where factorials appear at? Well, for example, derivatives, precisely the power rule. If I were to take the derivative of x cubed, that would give me 3x squared. Well, differentiating again, I will get 3 times 2 times x. And then again, I will just get, well, 3 times 2 times 1 and x disappeared. So I get that the third derivative of x to the power of 3 is 3 factorial. I can generalize that by saying that the nth derivative of x to the power of n is n factorial. But it doesn't really work because, well, by the time we get to that n factorial, our x has already disappeared in the process of differentiation. And it doesn't really allow any x dependency there, does it? So how can I make my x stay then? Well, I could turn to negative exponents, for example, because, well, if I am to differentiate x to the negative first power, well, I will never get rid of my variable. But the n factorial pattern stays exactly, almost exactly the same, yeah? Now let me just quickly generalize the pattern we've got here. We can write it as follows. And, well, that's nice because we finally have our x here with us. And now let me just kind of simplify it so it looks even cleaner. And now we'll notice that I also multiplied both sides by negative 1 to be able to suck in a negative 1 into the x to the power of n plus 1 there. And I would love to be able to plug in x equal to negative 1 into this entire equation because that would just make my right-hand side be equal to n factorial itself, but I honestly doubt that the left-hand side will appreciate me doing that to it, and so I think we need to find some other representation for the left-hand side here. Some other representation for this negative 1 over x, a 1 of which we could take, well, n derivatives of, and 1 to which we could plug in x equal to negative 1. Maybe we should make it dependent on some other variable? Let's see. Okay, but one other time. So, and derivatives. What is a function that is easy to take the derivatives of? Well, probably the exponential, because it's its own derivative, for God's sake. And no, I would like to modify that a little bit. I would like to put an additional t up there in the exponential, multiplying the x byte. Now, if I were to integrate this thing with respect to t, I would get e to the tx by x, plus c. Well, there is your 1 over x. I mean, we are getting somewhere. But how do I make that integral become just negative 1 over x? 
Well, I make it definite. So, what bound should I use here? The bound of zero as the lower bound would be perfect because then I will just get that, well, negative one over x at the very end of my evaluation. And now I just need some upper bound that will make the entire rest just disappear because I don't need anything more, honestly. And so, if x was negative, and I really hope it is, I mean, I eventually want to plug in x equal to negative one, as you probably remember, then t going to infinity will make that entire thing go to zero. So if I just plug it in, I will get those bounds, zero and infinity, this will just yield negative one over x, I love it. And so I've got my new representation for negative one over x, so let me just now take the nth derivative of both hand sides there, on the right hand side, I will just get that stuff in terms of n factorial, on the left hand side, the nth derivative will just slip inside of the integral, and will become the nth partial derivative, because my integrand is convergent there, because, remind you, x, I would like to eventually plug it to negative 1, so I might just as well say it's gonna be negative, yeah? Okay, love it, because then, just repeating the power all n times, I will get this expression right over here, now let me just plug in that x equal to negative 1, finally, <laughs> I've dreamt about it for a long time, now I can do it, does it become a function? Whoa! <laughs> A rigorous disclaimer, I did not fully prove that the function works for all values of x, I only intuitively derived it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Oh, too much of a rotation. See you in the next one.